we've been sitting here since 6 30 so um we're not going to go over the previous minutes because we don't have a quorum uh, we do not have any committee guests this evening uh, we will go to the architect's report architect's report uh same as last time relative to the construction phase we're supporting uh the construction phase via questions which are called rfis um shop drawings and submittals which talk about the various components that are being put in the building um, and reviewing pay requisitions potential uh change orders that sort of thing so uh, and jill is oh i see she's here on on, on the call Jill is our construction administrator. She also was one of the architects who worked on this project throughout the design process. The ff and &E furnitures, fixtures, and equipment, you recall, I think last time we reported, we've been through the state, they blessed the project. Um, purchase orders uh, have been, I think they've all been drawn up and, and Nikki has, or will be shortly, Nikki and Emily will be submitting them to the town so that you get furniture ordered. The vendors will be supplying um, the furniture necessary only for each wing when it's when each wing is uh, expecting deliveries. So you don't have to worry about storing the, the furniture for a period of a year or a year and a half until you need the last piece. The other, the other element is the technology equipment, which is in process of being designed um, and that package because of a it, you, we used to be able to pull that off the state list also which made the process a little bit easier but um, now a requirement anything over a hundred thousand dollars worth of technology equipment total has to be uh, publicly bid so we'll be in the process of putting those together um, Chris will be uh, pulling the, the town um, front end documents for bidding and stuff. And we'll try to streamline that process as much as possible. So that's kind of the design summary. I know when we get to Chris, we want to present to this committee where we stand relative to the technology components. Um, I don't know if we want to do that now or wait until Chris does his report. And we'll let Chris take the lead on putting the thing on the screen. So that's the, that now since you mentioned it. So if you if you have it, Chris, if you want to put it up on the screen, I don't have it on my. Yep. We can just I'll walk this group through. Um, you may recall early in the design process, uh, there was an initial <clears throat> preliminary technology um, conversation about scope. Um, since then, it's been refined. Um, our technology consultant, GTC, this is a preliminary estimate, and that's all it is, is an estimate. Um, and they've broken components in, into various larger blocks of space. So, for example, right here, you see uh, the network, the switches uh, on the systems, and you have data voice. Uh, WAP is wireless access points. Core switches, um, they list the manufacturer. Um, that they base the design around. And then we have uh, a, 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 a th on this particular one, it's $300,000 worth of uh, equipment, about $25,000 to install. And this gets, this gets uh, put out to bid. And I think the other important thing for this committee, obviously, is you see there's a column G there is eligible costs. Um, all this is eligible for your reimbursement uh, through the state, which is obviously uh, of key importance also. Um, TE2, uh, that's wire, wireless access points um, throughout the building so that, I think self-explanatory, so you have wireless um, throughout, you don't have to hardwire uh, and that for uh, computers everywhere, you can actually now run wireless. Again, there's, uh, they get 167 um, uh, throughout the building, about $800 for a unit cost plus the installed, and you get about $158,000 there, ballpark estimate for, 
for that particular component. Again, this is all equipment too. The, the infrastructure is already done on, on the base, uh, base building projects already been, been bid so that the, typically the electrician puts in the conduit and uh, those components within the, the base building. Telephone system, T3. Um, Chris, can you scroll down a bit? Thank you. Yep. So, so telephone system, uh, you went too far, um, um, is a system that the district is requesting. My recollection is, Chris, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that this is a proprietary system. Um, yes. So that um, <clears throat> it'll be, it's consistent with uh, what the district has on their other facilities, and that was a request. It's not a not a big equipment cost, but it is an equipment cost of, of ball, again ballpark twenty grand is the estimate. Again, I'll remind everybody: all this all this material has to go out to bid, with the exception of the the sole source. They'd be they'd be providing a number directly. What? Well, uh... Not entirely, Bruce. The other the other items up top. Anything, the state contract number is. This is the. This is what's ide what identifies oh, sorry, yep. how we're carrying it. So, the network switches we're using the state contract. The sole source uh, would be direct to them, and then all these other items down below. We actually have to put out the bid because there is no state contract for uh, classroom sound state sound systems and digital signage. So as, as Chris is scrolling through, there's, there's, you know, all the other pieces here. I don't know if the committee wants me to, you want me to bore you reading through them, but um, it, it just the, the highlights as, you know, you have charging carts, you'll have computers. Um, I believe that it's a Mac system that the uh, school district has. So there'll be Macs as opposed to PCs. Um, Chris, if you want to keep scrolling down. Uh, keyboards, and then um, when you get to the very bottom line here is we're looking at about a 1.5, 1.6 million dollar uh, algae equipment uh, budget prior to going out to bid. Um, and you know, in theory, you you buying in quantity, you certainly uh, can expect some economies. But um, this is a, a budget number that's being held right now, the based on what our technology consultants feeling the market today is holding today versus when this might be bid later on this year. So let me just jump in a little bit here. So when we went through the initial budget in for every phase of this project, um, we initially had IT equipment at 1.5 million. Um, when we put everything out to bid, um, we were very concerned um, with the other items and disciplines of where the numbers were going to come in. Um, so we lowered the IT budget to a million. Um, when the bids came in, as you all know, we came in substantially several million dollars under budget. So basically, the number that we estimated was, a, was the correct number of 1.5 million. Um, with a couple of little specialties, we may go up to 1.6, but we have contingency areas that'll cover that. Um, every, all the other areas that we've increased so far have still been under the estimated budget. Um, so we're still well, several millions, if not um, close to 5 million still under budget. Um, so what we wanna do is what we did at the high school and what we promised the taxpayers that we're gonna give them a 21st century state-of-the-art facility. We're not wasting um, money on technology that's gonna be obsolete soon. Um, this is infrastructure, these are servers, this is equipment that is gonna be there for the long term. So um, the, even though the, the budget says on the bottom, you can see it says 995,000 and the Actual is going to be about 1.5 to 1.6, but again, we we have the funds available for that. Um, and again, just to re reiterate, we estimated it initially at 1.5, so everything's fallen into place perfectly. Um, we're not in any kind of a hardship. We're not wasting money by no means. Um, we've talked to everybody that has anything to do with IT in the in the school. 
Um, we started off with a wish list. Uh, we were able to provide some of that stuff. Other things we just didn't think were necessary. Um, after talking with the end users, they felt it wasn't really necessary. So this is enough. This is the, the, the great um, IT package. Now, once we uh, hardline it and put it out the bid and get the numbers, then we come back to the committee uh, with the exact numbers for approval. So this is basically just to give you guys information that what is being worked on um, to the extent of itemizing each, each, each piece of equipment and to reassure that the end users are being part of the decision making. So um, it's kind of what this tonight's presentation for the IT is, is was about. So just, just to wrap this up in, in terms of a little bit of a schedule, um, in two weeks on the 17th, GTC, the technology consultant, is going to uh, have a presentation of the entire technology package, very similar to what Emily and Nick did for the furniture. Uh, so this committee can approve uh, that package then. After that, uh, Walter, I'll need a, a board of ed meeting. We're thinking for the 22nd. 22nd. If they're scheduled. Um, and then anytime after the 22nd, uh, I've asked for availability from the state to get in for them to get their review. Uh, and then once we get the, their approval, we can then go out to bid and uh, go direct to the state contract vendors. So uh, this is all um, with the intention of getting obviously the, the technology equipment that we need for February in on time. So can I ask a question on the IT side? Absolutely. Um, so does this have any impact or will this change at all given the fact that um, right now all of the EPS students are being given an iPad? Now I know this isn't like legitimately, I, I know this may not be actual like computers and things like that, that what we're looking at costs for, but will this at all change if all of the students continue to get iPads every year? No, this okay. is, this is classroom displays. Um, right. We're not doing iPads, stuff like that because. No, I know that. Okay. I know that. So that is, that's still we coming from the town. Yep. Well, oh, this, I this, I, mean, this, I guess, is there any different infrastructure? Is there any different, um, I don't know, wiring? This is all about my pay grade stuff that's going to make any difference if all of the kids have an iPad, whether they do or don't. No, nope. and, and, and that's why we have all these stations. We have 187 um, stations, so the entire building is Wi Fi capable. It doesn't matter if you're on a Mac, if you're on an Apple, if you're on a Dell. Wi-Fi is a Wi-Fi, so it, it won't in, it won't inhibit whatever actual hardware or hardware that uh, the iPad or the pads that the kids are given. They still will go through the same type of infrastructure. Okay. All right, let me let me ask the question in, in a different way, but I think it's still Gina's question. Will 100% of the students and staff be capable of connecting online at any given instant? Yes. Okay. Part of that's your part question, of, Gina? That's part of my question. Yeah, I mean, yes, that's part of it. I know these line items aren't for computers necessarily and iPads, but it's for IT infrastructure that goes along with all of these things where Absolutely. we may have had 150 to 200 iPads in JFK, where now we're going to have, you know, six times that. So, and I don't know if that's going to continue after this year or not. It may or may not. I, I don't know. But I just want to make sure whatever we're doing now is Our, sufficient enough. If yeah, the only has the only thing that might change is that the town may have to increase what's called bandwidth. So instead yeah. of having, like you're saying, 200, you're going to have 500. But that that is town driven. That it has to do with the IT department. We are putting the infrastructure, the servers, the backup, the everything yep. in order to do that. So yeah, you you okay. you're absolutely right. Though yes, okay. that is that Thank all you. will be in place. Part of, the, part of the school construction grant requires that the building be fully wireless, so. Yes, sir. Chris, our next meeting is either on the 15th or the 29th. 
So could you do something for the 15th or is that too soon? Um, so um, that's probably too, the, Chris, that's probably too quick. Or, or if, if we have to, we'll call a special meeting on the 22nd. Well, we might be, we're going to be calling a special building committee meeting on the 10th. Well, whatever. I'm just giving you what the dates of our meetings are right now. I'm going to be ready the 10th. Right. We're not going to be ready for the 10th. No, the 15th, he's saying. No, the BOE meetings are the 15th and the 29th. Right. We, we'll, we'll probably have to just push it to the 29th unless okay. we get a special meeting for the 22nd. If you uh, need well, a special so meeting, let me know. Okay. I'll tell you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions regarding the architect or the IT? All right, very good. Um, we'll move on to the CMR, construction manager at risk. Um, Marcus? Sorry, that, that IT stuff put me to sleep. <laughs> All right, let me, let me try to share my screen here. Okay, can we all see uh, the PowerPoint? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, there we go. Okay, uh, you're familiar with this slide, just a reminder of where we are logistically uh, for the project. We're still in the back half of the building um, with the three wings under our control. If you look at the, the picture on the right, um, as you're all aware, we did swing spaces this summer, which I have some pictures of at the end, but all of those blue areas within that existing building have been turned into swing spaces or temporary classrooms, and that work is complete at this point. Uh, and they'll obviously see different teachers over the course of the construction as each area is swung uh, from a different part of the building. Uh, so this is a, a shot of the new uh, auditorium locker room addition, uh, the bigger picture. Um, so the wall to the left that you see is the existing gymnasium, uh, the brick wall that is, and uh, the addition sits right within that. Um, so all of the footings and the concrete at this point is complete and the area has been turned over to the masonry crew. Um, there's a course of masonry that needs to go down before we pour the slab on grade throughout that whole area. <clears throat> that layout course is getting put in now, and they also started on a small piece of the walls, full height, that is, uh, against the gym because we were able to accelerate that small area. Uh, and that's what the picture on the right, you actually see one of the first walls that went up uh, in the addition uh, that, that ties right into the gym. Um, another shot of the same area, uh, the crew compacting the underground work there is actually one of the future uh, locker rooms. Uh, so just orientate you again, the gym is on your left now. Uh, you're kind of in the nook between the two existing win wings of the building there uh, where the locker rooms will be. And I believe it's a, a choral or a music room uh, that I'm basically standing in as I take that shot looking back at the existing building. Uh, the smaller picture on the right is standing in the addition looking outboard toward uh, the old basketball court area and that sh shows those exterior walls are obviously frost walls so they're deeper and there's a, a insulation that goes against the wall and then underneath the slab from an energy standpoint and you can see that going in uh, as well there. Uh, this is that same area of the building, uh, but the renovation portion, so the old black wing, uh, half of the corridor essentially stayed, <coughs> excuse me, stayed in place. Um, and we, we took down all the demising walls. We cut up the entire slab for all new underground trenching for storm and sanitary work. And that all, all that underground work has been completed and the slabs are placed back. Kind of hard to see in the picture on the right, but uh, if you look closely, you can see slab patching uh, throughout that area. The picture on the left, all the existing windows um, had a precast sill and brickwork underneath that sill that had to be removed due to PCB. <laughs> all that, the precast sill and all the PCB so, uh, brick has been removed, as well as any areas that had PCB soil underneath it that had the PCB that leached down into the soil. All that's been removed. This picture on the left actually shows the new brickwork back in place. Uh, and at this point, we're waiting on the sills to show up. Uh, we expect both the sills and the windows to show up in the month of September. Uh, going over to the yellow wing, um, 
picture on the left is the old girls locker room. Um, a month ago, we had shoring throughout this area as uh, there was an existing masonry wall down the center of this that held up the roof structure. Uh, you can see, uh, if I get on, you can see new beams here and a couple new columns down here, and there's new beams along this whole run here um, that allowed uh, the new footings and columns to pick up the load of that roof, which allowed the demolition of that existing wall. Um, and now the gentleman down at the end in this picture is actually cutting up the slab for the underground plumbing work that'll go in this area. This area becomes uh, at the far end uh, expanded cafeteria and closer to me in the picture uh, is the future fitness area. Uh, picture on the right is the other side of uh, the old pool. So the, the new kitchen area, which is the former boys locker room. Uh, we are nearing completion at this point with the underground plumbing in that area. As you can imagine, as it being a kitchen and a surgery, there was a substantial amount of underground work in there. Um, and that should be wrapping up this week, um, if not early next week with the backfill portion of that. We're shooting for tomorrow for the uh, testing of that underground. Your old pool uh, has been completely backfilled and we retrenched some areas to get the underground storm and sanitary put in. Uh, and this picture is the crew uh, re-backfilling those trenches where the, the storm line was uh, that cut right through the center of the old pool. Uh, and this entire yellow area of the old, both old locker rooms and the old pool, uh, we're shooting to re-pour the slab on grade in this area within the month of September. Uh, and we're tracking well to accomplish that. Um, going outside that wing, uh, we as we built a new addition to house the MEP switch gear or the electrical switch gear and a, a new fire pump. Um, so that's what you can see here in, the, in this uh, picture on the left, the foundations for that new uh, area. You see the underground stub ups that come in for the fire service that both comes in and goes back out to a hydrant uh, and the service that comes in for the new water main. Uh, the service coming in from the switch gear Actually, these conduits are the data conduits that come in and, and will continue on to the MDF room. Uh, and there's a trench that's already backfilled in this particular shot uh, in this vicinity that runs for the switch gear. Um, and then these two shots on the right, this one is just the data conduits coming in from the roadway area. And this one shows the, the switch gear location for the primary electric uh, and the secondary feeders that, that both, they, both, they both run uh, into, the, into this addition area as I can show here. Um, so that's progressing well. Uh, as soon as the electricians finish the underground portion of that area, we're going to pour the slab. Uh, it's masonry walls and trusses, and we have those trusses already on site, um, so they're waiting to go up. And I just received word today that the new switch gear is tracking for early November, uh, so that's all uh, tracking well. Uh, area F, the blue wing. Uh, Finally calling it the correct color. Um, so uh, the roofer has been on site this week, uh, installing safety rails around the perimeter of the roof and working on uh, removing and, and replacing the coping that was there. And they're gonna start in earnest tomorrow morning, uh, ripping and replacing the roof of this wing. We're gonna start from the hub area and work our way out. I expect it to be about a two week process. We have several roof penetrations to do as we do that as this wing along with the other two-story wings all have a significant amount of rooftop ductwork. So a unit in the middle of the roof, a bunch of horizontal uh, ductwork, and then, then individual penetrations to shafts within each uh, classroom. Uh, so that'll slow down the roofing process in this wing for sure, getting all that, uh, those penetrations in place. The lower right picture is an exterior view of that uh, wing. Uh, very similar from a masonry standpoint, as I mentioned to that, the B-wing, all the masonry has been replaced or the brick has been replaced and we're awaiting the sills and the windows for this area and those should start going in in the month of September as well. Interior of the blue wing, second floor shot here on the right. Um, you can see demolition is 100% done at this point. Um, it's hard to tell in the picture, but uh, this black line here and the, and the whip that comes off it is actually the new sprinkler system already in place on that second floor. Um, and the sprinkler crew actually uh, starting to move down to the first floor as well. Um, it already has some names up there. 
Uh, with the roof work taking place over the next two weeks, then we'll start in earnest with the balance of the MEP uh, overhead rough uh, throughout the wing. This left picture is the old gang bathroom area um, within that first floor. Uh, it'll be a gang bathroom again, just slightly different layout. All the underground plumbing work is complete uh, in place, tested, backfilled, and actually the slab uh, that you can kind of see here. Uh, and, and go sporadic around all that trenching. We poured that yesterday, actually. So that entire wing, uh, the underground piece is back in place with the exception of the electrical room proper uh, that we'll be placing as we finalize the conduit step ups in that area uh, over the next week or two. Swing spaces. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, all right, so this is the former cafeteria area. Uh, several demising walls are added. New HVAC systems overhead, new uh, HVAC unit on the roof for fresh air for the rooms that uh, were not on exterior walls. Um, all completed over the summer. Our area looks very nice. Uh, they just moved in this week, obviously, or uh, starting last week and into this week. Um, so uh, all in good shape. Uh, very similar in the old former media center. Uh, only major difference is there's carpet here. Um, but again, several demising walls, new ceiling work, new mechanicals. Uh, we fed off an existing rooftop unit in that area, but all that is complete at this point and functional and operational. Um, and then uh, the ALP room, which was a two small rooms that we turned into swing space uh, rooms with an area C, which was the yellow wing. I uh, see one of the rooms here, um, and then you'll see the, the corridor that leads to the gym access here, uh, standing basically at the hub in the middle picture. And then you see the sheetrock enclosure we built uh, for the traffic going to the gym uh, on the right picture. Um, so we effectively have construction on both sides of this entrance to the gym uh, that the kids will transverse, uh, you know, in a safe environment over the next couple months. And that is a quick update uh, of where we stand. Any general questions or any pictures you want me to go back to? Anybody? I mean, yeah. if I can, I'll probably ask the same question every week. I mean, are we ready for the kiddos to come in? We, we absolutely are, yeah. Uh, as okay. you saw, the swing space pictures look great. The moving yeah, crew uh, was um, in the, over the last week and, and got all the of the furniture that was temporarily stored in, in the hub and some other hallways into the swing space rooms. Um, so I believe uh, Andrew's actually on the phone, so he could probably comment on that too. But from our perspective, uh, we're in good shape. Awesome. Okay. And whatever um, accommodations that need to be made due to whatever COVID restrictions, procedures um, that JFK is putting into place, all of that has been dealt with and we're good to go. Perfect. Yep. Makes me happy. Makes everybody happy. Great question. It, Thank yeah, you. I, I mean it's it's all over. You know, you know, kids parents are nervous anyway about sending their kids back right now. And oh, yeah. so I think in a in a construction zone. So for anybody who's watching to like sort of understand that they're they're not gonna be walking through what you in your mind think is a construction zone. They're going to be actually in classes, they're not gonna be in portions of the building because they are construction zones. And when you are walking through corridors, you may see some sheetrock and there may be some, yeah, I don't know, you may hear something, I don't know, but they're not gonna have access to these areas that are construction areas. So, I mean, people people are worried about that. So no, you're absolutely you're right, and, and it's a great question. And, and you know what, I could, we could probably say this is the best case scenario because we are hypersensitive because one, it's a construction zone and two, because of the COVID environment. So it's not just letting the kids come back to school and that's all we're dealing with. We're, we're, we're hypersensitive because not only are we dealing with the kids coming back, but now we're dealing with a construction zone. So uh, yeah. that's a Can question. We can we get some of those pictures, especially the swing space and maybe even some of those corridors so people can see that they're blocked off? Can we get some of those pictures so we can post them on um, the JFK Facebook page? We can put them on, yep. honestly, maybe even Andrew 
can put them in one of the JFK newsletters that are electronically going out. Caitlin, why don't you that, answer that? That is what people want to see. They are freaked out. Yep. So Monty and I actually had a conversation about doing a like a, a virtual, you know, newsletter snapshot to post e pages, e newsletter to email out to, you know, all the JFK emails. Um, and these pictures that Marcus gave us tonight are perfect for that. Um, so if we could, Marcus, get that, <laughs> this presentation as well. Yes. <laughs> just for going forward, all the presentations, just, you know, <laughs> just if you could email. Um, right. And, and I think that's a, really what important. to expect when you get there type of um, informational piece. Right. So if we can get a certain, a, a couple of these, like on the website, I don't know, yesterday, tomorrow, today, tonight, whenever. Yeah, some hey, of those. Monty, yeah, yeah. Uh, these are the, these oh, are there's the ones that people want to see. Um, so they can understand what a swing space is, but they can understand what a. That's a good a, point a classroom yep. in the cafeteria actually looks like because I really people do Absolutely. actually think they're walking into a cafeteria and there's just going to be desks well you so, know what Gina, I think Gina I think right. that's a great point because those of us that live in construction we don't see what you see as a mother as a parent as a somebody who has kids in school you know we take this for granted we're like we, we're building a beautiful swing space so don't worry about it we're my eyes have a vision different than your eyes as a parent has a child going in. So I think that's absolutely perfect. That's a great question. And absolutely. Now, Jean, um, Caitlin, do we, what is, what is the website that we have that maybe the public can go on to in addition to the town one? Well, we have a Facebook page too, right? We have the Facebook page and then we do have on the town, I, it's where, you know, the minutes are posted. I don't know that we have our, own necessary um, website. I don't think so. Okay. Facebook if page. We, if we can get these for the Facebook page. Yep. That, and then, that and if we can put, you know, I think Monty's actually on the call. I think he called and I just heard. Yeah, him. I'm here, guys. I'm, I'm having trouble dialing in. But uh, Marcus, if you can send those over to me, uh, I'll be in my yes. office tomorrow. I can get those posted up on our Facebook uh, page and at least get that kind of kind of in the works. That would be amazing. Can I, I may I please? Hammer, I don't mean to hammer it, but these are the questions that right. we get and that I get stopped and asked. And, and I'm sure the Board of Ed members get it more than I do. Um, this is Andrew Barris. May I please have them as well? Uh, I have a pretty lengthy newsletter going out tomorrow just for the opener. I've had a <laughs> bunch of them go out, but it would just be helpful for me. Um, we distributed a lot of iPad today, iPad today, and I had a few questions about just spaces, and it would just alleviate, I think, some anxiety around the whole thing. You know, yeah. we could even make a couple boards up if you want to leave them in the, the your office, so when parents do come in, they could see what one it's going to look like, and you know, two maybe it'll bring some questions up but uh yeah maybe we can bring some boards over and leave them in the main office also because you know we can't publicly display them because there's no public areas anymore like we did the high right. school but i guess if we we're doing a public groundbreak and we're going to have some boards uh i believe the groundbreak is the 14th is that correct greg yes that is okay, the 14th. So the 14th. So we're going to have all those boards and we can leave them. So you have them at the school. So that would be great. Um, a question about that. Do, do I, put, um, uh, you know, I'm, I've been updating the school community on just different little renovation updates, you know, nothing too, too, too in depth um, for the groundbreaking. I am absolutely um, communicating that to the public and inviting the school community to attend that event. Absolutely. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Yeah, we're actually, I believe Chris Dreisick is going to be sending something out next week, I believe. Uh, All right, I'll touch base with him. But yeah, we, we would try to get everybody. I mean, this is, you know, there's only one, one middle school, so anybody with yeah. children, this is going to be theirs. So we're trying to get it out to everybody. Right, yeah, perfect. I've been in touch with uh, Deb McCarthy and Kathy Zulucki, and uh, yeah, they are putting out the invitation to. Yeah, every place we can think of, you know, from the uh, press to the uh, state of Connecticut government offices, um, you know, through the town uh, website and uh, 
the parent notification system. So it's going out every way that we can possibly think of to uh, get get the information out to the public that the agreement is the 14th. If the Board of Ed and Town Council could bring it up during their meetings too, that'd be great. Cause I know a lot of people watch you guys too. You know, even, is it possible to do some sort of, I mean, the pictures are great, but maybe it's some sort of like um, virtual walkthrough video that we can post um, or something along those lines. Because I know, I mean, I know at least for my kids, you know, I don't get to see their classrooms this year, which is definitely hard, you know, as a parent. Um, but the teachers did a video of around the classroom and, you know, down. Oh. It was cute. It's, we're that's we're cool. in third grade here. <laughs> no, but that's great. You have parents, you know, sixth grade parents that, you know, may have never seen JFK. And now because of COVID, they can't. We have a video orientation going out tomorrow that kind of just gives the lay of the land and we plan on okay. just kind of showing what the classroom looks like and just also the bus routine and just that yep. whole thing. Mr. Yakabuchi is going to be the student and it will be entertaining. Okay. Um, so uh, yes. that's going out tomorrow as soon as we're done with awesome, that Andrew. Um, distribution. Great. Very good. Awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Great question. Anybody else have any questions? All right. Um, we, we do have a quorum now. So I guess we can, if Ellen wants to do a roll call, um, we can go through, oh, I'm sorry. No, we go, we have the owner's rep we can hit first and then we can do that so we can do our budget and pay some bills. So um, why don't we move on to the owner's rep, CSG. Uh, Chris, if you're available. Yeah, so just a couple of quick things, as you can see in some of the pictures here. So last Thursday, Friday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, yesterday, tomorrow, uh, we had the movers on site. They moved all of the furniture that was in the uh, corridor outside the media center, as well as in the hub that went into the cafeteria. They moved all that in. Uh, tomorrow's kind of the last push of uh, whatever furniture we need to make throughout the building, either for social distancing or for the temporary spaces. So uh, <clears throat> it was a pretty big con concern that um, uh, we were able to get out of the way. So that was, uh, that was the biggest effort over the last over the last week. So otherwise, uh, things are status quo. Excellent. All right, um, anybody have any questions for Chris? All right. Um, I guess, Ellen, would you mind? Can you do a roll call and then we can move on? Oh, look at those great kids. <laughs> I can't figure out how to stop sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Sharing's caring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. It's stop sharing. <laughs> I can't find the magic button. Huh? <laughs> 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 just, okay. just unplug it. Just unplug it. <laughs> we both. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, we can... Somebody help me out there. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Can we, can, we, can we get a um, uh, roll call, please, Ellen? Randy Daigle. Oh, God, yes. Marcus Brennan. Here. Dina Sakala. Here. David Costa. Chris Cycli. Here. Amy Dennis. Caitlin Dunn. Here. Nate Gingibella. Scott Copen. Here. Bruce Kellogg. Here. Walter Cruzel. Here. Kevin Mark Alfo. Michael Monafort. Here. Here. Joe Muller. Here. Jeff Oaken. Amar Shamas. Greg Stritch. Here. Stacy Thurston. Here. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Um, we're going to move on to the budget subcommittee. Um, everything that's being presented. This evening was discussed. 
um, and approved by the budget subcommittee. If it wasn't approved, it will not be presented tonight. Uh, we're gonna go through over the, the invoices and ATPs authorized to proceed. So Greg, would you mind taking it over from here, please? Okay, first thing I'd like to do is um, uh, add item 7B to the agenda, uh, invoice approvals. I'd like to make that motion. Second. Randy, you're muted. There we go. Uh, uh, any discussion? Show of hands, anybody, everybody in favor? Anybody against? And be abstained. Thank you. Okay, ATPs, that's the uh, item 7A on the agenda. Uh, ATP number is number 11. Uh, the title is OS 10 building number four code modifications in the amount of $55,974. Second. All in favor, show of hands. Anybody against? And be abstained. Um, actually, you know what, Greg? Why don't you make a motion to approve to bring all of them up at once, and then we can individually go through them and discuss and vote on them. Okay. Um, Thank you. Let's make a motion to uh, uh, review and approve ATP 0012, titled RFI number 418, 19, and 40, 14, excuse me, 4, 18, 19, and 40, footing changes due to coordination. ATP number 0014, uh, titled Demolition of Unanticipated Transite Underground Piping. ATP number 0015, uh, Bolton 03, Changes to Music Room. ATP number 16, uh, OS 28, RFI number 117, added steel framing for rooftop unit area F. Uh, ATP number 0017, kitchen underground trenching. And the final one is ATP 0018, additional temporary measures for swing spaces. That's the- Second. The I guess, yeah, there's a motion, right? Second. Yes. Yep. All in favor, show of hands. <clears throat> Anybody against? And be abstained. Thank you. All right, so we're on ATP 11. Marcus, do you want to just give a quick uh, uh, what this consists of? Yes, I can do that. Uh, so ATP 11 is uh, bulletin four from JCJ. Uh, so this came out as a result of um, the review of the documents from the building department and the fire department in our attempt to get a building permit. Um, so uh, a lot of small tickler items, um, adding a couple doors uh, to the exterior and the swing spaces, adding a door to the exterior out of the future fitness area, um, adding a door in one of the, a double door in one of the hallways uh, for an egress concern, um, adding a handicapped parking stall outside, uh, modifications to uh, some of the fencing that's around the outdoor uh, seating area outside the cafeteria, uh, just the addition of some gates out of that area. So if you're in it, you can get out of the area to the exterior. Um, and then some modifications to random walkways around the exterior and additional cabinet unit heaters, heating units uh, for the swing spaces in the cafeteria. Excellent. Uh, just to be clear, the dollar amount for ATP 11 is $55,974. Correct, yep. Yep. Is there a second? Second. Uh, show of hands all in favor. Anybody against? Anybody abstain? Thank you. Which one do you want to go to next, sir? <clears throat> 12. Okay, uh, ATP 12 uh, was for modifications to the cast in place uh, concrete footings and foundations, as well as some of the masonry foundations uh, to accommodate underground uh, MEP work. Um, some storm runs, but mostly the underground electrical run that came out of the switchgear room and ran through the addition area uh, and back toward the hub. Um, 
So modifications to that those trades work as a result of the final coordination of the MVP. Uh, 7,636. Your second. Second. <clears throat> Show hands all in favor. Anybody against? Anybody abstain? Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to 14. Okay, uh, 14 was uh, additional uh, underground storm piping that we discovered that was transite, uh, was not shown in the original plans, some outside of the old gym, so in the footprint of the addition, uh, and then some outside of uh, the F wing, the two-story wing that we're working on now. Um, so the uh, proper abatement and removal and disposal of that piping um, for $17,755. Second. Show hands all in favor. Any discussion? Again, thank you. Uh, we go to 15. Uh, ATP 15 is bulletin three from JCJ changes to the music room. Um, so uh, deletion of a decent amount of millwork in there and modification to some of the sound uh, acoustic panels. And I believe this was an owner driven uh, or end user driven request. And that is a credit of $8,409. Second. Any discussion? Show a hand all in favor. Anybody against? Anybody abstain? Thank you. Uh, we'll go to 16. Uh, ATP 16 is additional steel rooftop framing uh, for the uh, dedicated outside air unit that sits on area F. It was originally intended to bear. Uh, partially on existing uh, structure, roof structural steel. Uh, with the final coordination and layout, the unit had to move uh, about a foot, which requires additional uh, steel. Or something. Uh, so any discussion? No, I need a second. I'll second that. Any discussion? Show a hand all in favor. Anybody against? Anybody abstain? Uh, we'll go to 17. Okay. Uh, 17 is for the, all the underground uh, digging and backfilling for the kitchen uh, work. Uh, this was originally planned to be done by the demolition contractor and uh, due to multiple reasons on site, we moved the scope of the work to the site work contractor. Uh, so this is simply moving budget from uh, the original PO with the demo contractor to Bill Bain's work so we can pay the site work contractor. Second. Uh, so as far as discussion, basically we're, we removed some portion of scope from one contractor to another contractor so we can maintain the schedule. All in favor, show of hands. Anybody against? Anybody abstain? Uh, 18, please. 18 is the final one. Um, it's uh, expenditure within an owner allowance, so money that's already within Gilbane's GMP. Um, for some additional um, walls that the building is, uh, fire marshal and building inspector requested as we did our final walkthroughs uh, to remove some of the walls that would have, or excuse me, doors that would have uh, been screwed shut that went to the construction areas. We instead removed them and drywalled and taped and will paint uh, them shortly. Um, and then there's uh, dollars in here to remove carpeting that we just installed in the ALP rooms. Uh, and uh, put down uh, laminate flooring, as well as add two AC units to those rooms, uh, and add wall base to all the temp swing space classrooms as that was not originally shown. Seconds. Any discussion? Show of hands on favor. Anybody against? Anybody abstain? All right, um, so now why don't we move into the invoices. Uh, Greg, whichever one you want to start with. Okay, let's start with uh, CSG invoice number eight for the amount of $21,025.71. Second. Um, this is just a monthly fee. Uh, we have a contract with CSG. It is based on a monthly increments. Um, there's no additional services to this fee this month. Any other discussion? Show of hands, all in favor. Anybody against? Anybody abstain? 
Okay, next invoice is JCJ Architecture, uh, invoice number 17. Uh, I, the no, Greg, Greg. committee has tabled that. Okay, thank you. So we're gonna table that. So let's move on to Gilbane's. Uh, Gilbane invoice application number 11 for the period ending August 31st, 2020, $1,336,791.70. Second. Uh, for discussion, um, they have their monthly fee uh, contract sum, general conditions, and then we went through and itemized. There's 100, and I believe it's 140 pages of each of their subs, disciplines, uh, what they've done up to date. Uh, we went through all those and confirmed all of the um, invoices for each of those subs for a total of $1,336,791.70. Any other discussion? Show of hands, all in favor? Anybody against? That'd be abstain. Next awesome. invoice. Next okay. invoice is for TRC, dated August 6, 2020. Invoice number 429342 in the amount of $42,070 and no cents. This is for hazardous material monitoring. Second. Uh, again, open for discussion. Um, they are affirmed that we, the town had to hire to monitor the asbestos removal and testing of, a, of a, abatements. Any discussion? Show of hands, all favor? Anybody against? Anybody abstain? Thank you. Next invoice for Independent Material Testing Labs, Inc. Uh, their invoice number 4707-A, dated 731-2020, $645. Second. Uh, again, this is a testing company that has to test um, anywhere from uh, compaction all the way up to um, certifying uh, connections. So um, this is just one of the inspection companies. It's a third party. Um, that's why it's not these three or these four invoices that Greg is talking about. These are third party inspections that are being done and not part of Gilbane or part of CSG. Um, their contract is held by the town. Um, so it's independent from um, the contractual services. Uh, all, any questions? All in favor? And again, and we abstain. Thank you. Next invoice, AAIS dated uh, 8-11-2020, $963,348.40. Second. All right, Chris, you want to take this one? Sure. So AAIS is doing the uh, demo and abatement <clears throat> on uh, t and essentially utilizing state contract unit prices. Um, this is the requirement from school construction grants for this project. So uh, what we do is we track them uh, daily manpower ticket tickets. Uh, we tally them up at the end of the week and we, we capture it week by week. Uh, so this is for week six through 10. Any other discussion? Scott, did you second that one? I'm sorry. I think I did. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? Show of hands on favor. Anybody against? Anybody abstain? Uh, next invoice is for Clean Harbors, invoice number 1003362052. This is for um, $1,376.25 for removal and disposal of paint. Second. Chris, you want to take this? Sure. So uh, when the school moved out of the building, the shop wing, um, there was a rolling cart of uh, leftover paints and stains and polyurethanes that needed to be disposed of. So that's what that's what this cost is for. Any other discussion? Show of hands in all favor. How much was it? 
1,376 and 25 cents. It's hazardous waste. It's got to get disposed, sir. And you've got to document where it's coming from and where it's going to. It can't just get thrown in a dump. The town couldn't have done that? No, they hired, they actually hired Clean Harbors to do all of the uh, right. science lab uh, chemicals that they disposed of as well. That was a separate, that was something Board of Ed did. Okay. It's, it's unfortunate, it's considered hazardous waste, so it's. No, I know that. I'm just. Yeah, I know. It's just silly. It was that much money, and the town couldn't deal with it internally. That's, that's I guess. why those cans sat there for that long, because it is expensive. Well, the town was supposed to, but we took it upon ourselves because we had to keep the project going. Great questions. <laughs> Such a martyr you are, Randy. <laughs> Any other discussion? Show of hands. All in favor, anybody against, and be abstained. Okay, the final invoice again is for Clean Harbors. Invoice number 1003397684 for $2,943. Uh, this is for transfer and disposal of some drums of, uh, I believe it was chlorine from the pool. Right. Second. Same same situation. Uh, we had to dispose of the chlorine that was left at the project before we can continue working in that area. Once they once they decommission the pool. Once they decommission the pool. Any other discussion? Show of hands all in favor. Anybody against? Anybody abstain? That's it for invoices, Mr. Chairman. All right. That's so. That was a. Uh, Budget subcommittee. Anybody have anything under old business they want to bring up? Anybody have any new business they want to bring up? Um, communication subcommittee. I know you guys jumped in a little bit, which was very helpful. Do you have anything else you want to add to it? Uh, no, I don't. I don't really have any new updates. Okay, just a couple of things on, on the groundbreaking. Um, Deb McCarthy and Kathy Zalecki, uh, I and I have been working together and we've sent out notifications to uh, every possible uh, person and organization that we can think of. And of course, Andrew's gonna be sending some out through um, uh, his system to the parents. Uh, groundbreaking is Monday, September 14th, 2020 at 6 p.m. Uh, this, of course, will be a uh, uh, event that's held at the school. Uh, social distancing will be required and masks will be required uh, to attend this event. Uh, the program is going through its final tweaks and uh, the final draft will be presented to the chairman in the next couple of days, along with the final posters that will be presented. Uh, for the viewing of the public and the uh, attendees, uh, those will be presented to the chairman next couple of days also for final blessing and printing. Uh, the final details uh, have been worked out with uh, Andrew in terms of uh, uh, setting up chairs and the podium and tables and easels and all that stuff is uh, all coordinated with Andrew. Along, along with uh, uh, Amar has uh, providing us uh, the uh, location and uh, a pile of dirt to be used with the uh, shovels that he'll be providing. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, Ellen, we're gonna need you to put out an agenda for us for a meeting for uh, the 14th indicating that there will be a quorum most likely present of the building committee and uh, that no business will be conducted uh, at that uh, event. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, I think that's about it, Mr. Chairman. Uh, when is the date and time again? Monday, September 14th, 2020, 6 p.m. at the school at 155 Raffia Road, Enfield, Connecticut. Excellent. 
Uh, hey, uh, Randy and Greg, we talked about in finance the um, if we do the tour of the facility sometime next week, we also have to put an agenda out saying a quorum may be present. Uh, good, good point, Scott. Thank yep. you. Yep. Yep. Uh, we will contact the committee members and the liaisons and um, have a date we could walk through the building. Uh, looks like we could discuss the date too. Okay, um, anybody have any other questions for the uh, communication subcommittee? All right, our next meeting, Greg. Uh, I guess you're gonna call a special meeting for- no, We're gonna we try a special, special meeting next Thursday. No, we don't, we don't need all the info. We don't need one. We don't need it. Oh, you're right, right. we don't, because we got a quorum, so we're not doing a special meeting, you're right. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that the next meeting be uh, September 17th. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Show of hands in favor. Anybody against? Anybody abstain? All right. The meeting comments. Um, liaisons, any comments? Great job, everyone. No. Keep it up. Yeah, I've made mine. Thank you very much. Just keep Walter, up the good work. I won't be at the one on the seventeenth. Okay. So, so, but great job, guys. Thank you guys very much, and love your participations, and love your questions. And I know you guys get a lot of questions from the public, so uh, I appreciate it. You guys speaking on our behalf. Uh, committee members, any questions or comments? Monty, thank you so much for calling in and making it a quorum. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Sorry about that. No, no, understand. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, anybody have any good to order? Anybody have any, any birthdays or anything? Oh, wait, Chris, you had a birthday. Yeah, I just heard he had a birthday on Friday. That's yeah. right. How old was he? 50 just what? Puppy. 50 what? Huh? How old? 50 what? <laughs> well, you better uh, tell you us. Fast sir. forward a little bit. 40, 41. Tell us, sir. That's what we're going with. 41. Oh my God, you're a baby. I know. Uh, a puppy. Oh, that's what I say. said. Oh my God. That's Damn. impressive. He doesn't have mileage yet. It's a great age. <laughs> <laughs> that's how old I am. Damn. I can't uh, young with this group. <laughs> All right. Well, happy birthday. You're welcome. Thank anybody you. Else, anybody else have any uh, good to the order? Marcus, <laughs> thank Mr. you. Mr. Chairman, I have one item. <laughs> I have one item here, Mr. Chairman. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Seconded. Any discussion? Show of hands on favor. Anybody against? Thank you all very much for taking your time. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you all.